Chapter 8, the inseparable prepositions and the conjunctive vav. Um, in Hebrew, we have two types of prepositions. We have separable prepositions, where the preposition is separate from the word. But we also have what's called inseparable prepositions, where the preposition is a directly attached to the front of a word. Uh, inseparable prepositions are normally the lamed, the bait, and the kaf. These are known as inseparable prepositions. They're attached to the front of a word. And so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about attaching uh, those inseparable prepositions to the front of the word. The first thing we want to know is the original protoform. So again, when we have the lamed and the bait and the kaf, originally in proto-world there was a patach under them. And so we're going to keep that in mind as we do these. All right, so now we're looking at the attaching or pointing of inseparable prepositions. That's section two of chapter eight. And so this is what we would call like the normal way of doing it. And so let's suppose you have a word like davar. And then what you want to do is you want to attach a um, inseparable preposition, lamed. Originally what you would have is a patach, and if you want to we can go back just for a review and put all the kametzes here as patachs. And then I told you that the inseparable preposition also has this patach. And so when we divide the syllables, again the rules is closed accented, Hebrew prefers long, pre-tonic open, Hebrew requires long. And now we have in an open, an originally open, pro-pre-tonic position, we have a short vowel. That's going to be reduced to a shva. And so that's exactly how the inseparable preposition is normally attached to a word. It's the preposition with the vocal schwa. The reason why it's a vocal schwa is that the original patach under the inseparable preposition being in the original open pro pretonic syllable reduces to a schwa and that's it. So again that goes according to our rules beautifully. This would be rule five, that's rule two, this is rule one. But if life were only so easy like that all the time, it's not. So the next one we want to come to is the second one where we talk about attaching the inseparable preposition as a hyric. So let's look at that. If we have a word like, um, uh, let's just make it like uh, shemo. Uh, suppose we have a word like this in Hebrew. And now we want to add the inseparable preposition. I'll tell you what, let's go to Shem, Shemuel. That would be better. Let's do Shemuel like this. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the inseparable preposition. This time we'll make it a kaf. We'll put a dagish lene there because it's beginning a word. And again, originally it was patach here. And remember, that's a vocal schwa here, which again went back to some type of... Um, a uh, short vowel will make it a hyric this time. And so again, as we crunch the rules, uh, really as we divide the syllables, the syllables would look something like this. And so this is accented, closed, Hebrew prefers long. You have the long, there's no problem there. Pre-tonic open requires long. You've got a historic long vowel, you're fine there. But now as we get to the, the, the sheen syllable here, we have a short vowel and originally open pro-pre-tonic syllable you get reduction. And then what you get is with the patach here, the same thing. In an originally open pro pretonic position, you get the schwa. Which means we have a situation that I promised you that we would have, namely two vocal schwas back to back at the beginning of a word. When you have this, you have a schwa fight. And then if this were a guttural, if the first letter were a guttural, you'd have a patach. But uh, all three of the inseparable prepositions are non-gutturals. And therefore, when you have the schwa fight, you're going to have the hyric. And that's why you get the hyric there. And you say, uh, ki shemuel or ki shemuel, something like this. But I'm sorry, I say ki shemuel, something like that. And there, there you go. So that's what you get for the hyric. All right. But uh, we do have one little exception that we also need to talk about. And suppose we have a word that um, here's the word, Yehuda. This time again, we start the word with a vocal schwa. 
but this time it's with a yod, and that's what's important, the yod. So when we put the inseparable preposition on, this time I'll make it a bait. We've got to put the dagesh lene in there. Remember, originally it's a patach, but it's in the open propitonic position. And so what we're going to get is we're going to get a schwa. You're going to get reduction. Uh, rule five again of our rules. Uh, this time we're going to have a schwa fight again, just like we had before. We have two vocal schwas. They fight it out. And, of course, you're going to end up with this. However, this time we get something different. Uh, when Herrick and Yod see each other, you know, they're pretty closely attached to each other. If you remember when we did the, the vowels. And so they're old friends. Matter of fact, they're old boyfriend and girlfriend. That's the way we look at it. And therefore, what we have here is what we call the Hebrew love story. The Herrick and the Yod see each other again. And once that happens... Uh, they fall in love again, which means the, uh, the uh, vocal schwa has to go away. Uh, it loses out. And so uh, we call this the Hebrew love story, simply because um, the Herrick and the Yod see each other, fall back in love again, and so the old, uh, the old girlfriend or whatever of the schwa, I mean of the Yod, namely the schwa, uh, has to leave. So you've got to remember that. That's the Hebrew love story. And so when Herrick Yod see each other, forget it. It's over. They, they rekindle their old uh, love, and so vocal schwa has to go away. So you must keep that in mind. That's just for the Yod with vocal schwa. Any other um, consonant that has a simple vocal schwa under it, you would get this situation where you'd keep the, uh, uh, the schwa. But not with Yod. With Yod, uh, love is in the air. So remember that. Okay, the next situation is if you have a situation uh, that we have a guttural at the beginning of a word. So we have a guttural, uh, da, ma, like this. And the guttural already has a composite schwa with it. And now we go to put a, um, a uh, inseparable preposition. And originally uh, you have a patach there. Uh, that's the original vowel. Well, uh, the problem is that um, if we reduce this to a vocal schwa, which we, that's what you would expect because, again, it's in the open propitonic position. If you were to have that type of reduction, we'd have a real problem because, again, you would have two vocal schwas beginning a word. Hebrew will not allow this. And so when you get this kind of condition where you have a composite schwa here, simple uh, vocal schwa at the beginning, then you're going to have to turn this into a vowel in order to prevent having two consecutive vocal schwas. Well, the question is what vowel we're going to choose. And the answer to that is... What type of vowel do you have in the composite schwa? If you have patach here, then you're going to have a patach here. If you have a segol here, uh, the chetef segol, then you're going to have a segol under the lamed. If you have the chetef chametz chatuf, then you're going to have a chametz chatuf. What you have here is the corresponding short vowel of the composite schwa. That's what you're going to have. So if you have a word that begins uh, with a composite schwa, then the, the uh, inseparable preposition will take the short vowel that corresponds to the composite schwa that you have under the first letter, which of course will be a guttural, as you see here. And so that's what you're going to have. And you can see the different examples again in number three. When you come to number four, you have a situation where you have now the accent, okay? And now we have the inseparable preposition. Here I have the kaf. I'll put the dagesh lene there. Remember, in proto-world, we have a patach like this. And now, look what we have. We have a pretonic open situation. And when you get a pretonic open situation, Short vowels lengthen to long comets. And so when the inseparable preposition is put on a word that begins 
with a accented syllable like we have with a word like Mayim. Then the Kaf can lengthen the original Patak to a long Kametz. This fits our rules beautifully, and we love that. However, uh, life's not so simple again. Uh, life can be far more complicated. And so you have a word like Melech. Accent here. You put the inseparable preposition on, and sometimes you would, you would expect, and that's what you long for. You long for that long Kametz. But oftentimes, you get vocal schwa. We see that. We don't like it, but we can't fight City Hall about this. The truth of the matter is that the inseparable prepositions, so, so commonly they were given vocal schwa, that even in places where you don't expect the vocal schwa, where it really breaks the rules, you get it sometimes. So when you have a situation of an inseparable preposition, before a, uh, the accented syllable, you may get the rules, namely the original patag lengthens, but sometimes you will get a vocal schwa imitating the very common way that the uh, inseparable prepositions are attached, namely with a vocal schwa, because so usually they're in the open pro-pretonic positions. So we do get it. And what can we do? Not much. We can just sit there and remember that and um, keep that in mind that it can go either way. So you want to keep that in mind. Now there's two words that deserve special attention. One of them is uh, Elohim, the word for God. And the word for God, uh, Elohim here, begins with a composite schwa. And so if we were to put an inseparable preposition on, what you would expect to happen is that you have the corresponding short uh, vowel. That's exactly what you would expect to happen. But we had an added complication with the word Elohim, and that is the Aleph quiesces, or becomes silent, becomes quiet. And when this happens, uh, the vowel disappears, or the, not the vowel, but the uh, composite schwa. It's a schwa, not a vowel. Disappears, and the letter becomes dead. Well, when a word or when a letter quiesces, we have to compensate the form for it, and so we're going to lengthen the segol to a sere. And this is our answer, lelohim. And with the bait would be belohim, and with the kaf we'd say uh, kelohim. And so again, one more time, uh, you have elohim, and what we described is with a composite schwa, you get the corresponding short. The olive quiesces, you get rid of the schwa, and for the quiescing of the olive, you must compensate the form, and so you lengthen the segol to a sere, and that's your answer. So keep that in mind. Now another word, and this is the uh, tetragrammaton, this word here. Um, the Jews would not pronounce the divine name. Instead, what they would pronounce is another word, uh, which would look like this. When they saw the tetragrammaton, those four letters that I just uh, drew out for you, they would not pronounce the divine name. Instead, they would l look at this word and say Adonai. That's what they would do. So when they put the inseparable preposition on the tetragrammaton, the divine name, they did not put it on that word. They put it on this word that they would uh, use instead of saying the divine name. And therefore, uh, you have the inseparable preposition. Again, you have a guttural with a um, composite schwa. And so you take the corresponding short vowel. And therefore, that's what they did to the tetragrammaton. Okay? What they would do is simply attach the, um, the patach, but where does this patach come from? It comes from Adonai, that other word that I had written here. And so they would say La Adonai, or they would say just Ladonai, either way. And so that's the way uh, for this particular word. And again, that's an exceptional word. One other thing we need to look at, and that is, what if a word has the article? If the word has an article, as in my example here, 
The inseparable preposition, we would put it on the front. And again, originally, it was patach. Well, with this situation, there was a problem in Hebrew. Namely, when the letter he was in between two vowels, and that's what you see right here. The letter he has a vowel before it and a vowel after it. You can say this is intervocalic. The he is in between two vowels. The he had a tendency to leave. Um, and so what would happen is that he would disappear and the cough would really supplant the he. Now, this, is, this can be difficult, so you've got to watch out for this. What happens is the, the cough simply supplants the he but it leaves the pointing of the article intact, and that is what is important. That's how you're going to tell that what you have here is not simply like a word. This is like the word. How do I know that the article is still here? By the pointing right here. This pointing is the pointing of an article. The cough has simply taken the place of the hay. And therefore, if you look at uh, section 6, I have in one column, you can see I have the article, ha-melech, ha-adam, and so forth, all the different ways that the article can be pointed. You look in the right column, and I show you how that the preposition can supplant the hey of the article, but yet leave the vowel pointing of the article intact. And therefore, you have to translate accordingly to the king, to the man, and so forth. So watch out for that. Next is the conjunctive vav. The conjunctive vav is, again, a, just a vav attached to the front of a word. And originally, it again, had the uh, patach under it as the inseparable prepositions. The vav really means and, but when we translate it into English, not only can it sometimes be brought in as and, but like but, even, things like that also. So you want to keep that in mind. And so now we want to attach it on the front of a word. And again, uh, just like the inseparable prepositions, and I'll put the dagesh lene there to start, but when we attach it, originally it was a patach, but this is now in the open pro, originally open pro pretonic position. This gets reduced to a vocal schwa, and once you have a vocal schwa, we've got to get rid of that dagesh lene there. Uh, that dagesh lene has got to go. And so uh, that's the way we normally put it on most letters, right there, okay? Next is suppose you have a word like Yehuda again. We have a vocal schwa with a yod. That's what's important. We've got to have a vocal schwa with a yod. And again, we have the vav. And originally it would have been a patach, but being in the open propitonic syllable, it gets reduced. We're going to have a schwa fight. We're going to have now a Hebrew love story. These two are going to get together, which means goodbye, vocal schwa, and that's going to be our answer. Vihuda. Like so. There you go. Okay, so we've got to watch out for that. Okay, next is suppose you have a um, guttural with a composite schwa. So, again, we'll go to adama. We want the, we have the vav, originally patach, but what you're going to get again is in the open pro pretonic position. We're going to get the simple vocal schwa, but no, no, we cannot have these uh, two vocal schwas beginning a word. And we're going to have to put a short vowel here, and that's determined by the, uh, the vowel, as the, the element of the composite schwa. And so it, they have to correspond, and that's why you get this right here. Va -a -a -da, excuse me. Va -a -da -ma. That's what you'd say. Va -a -da -ma. Va -a -da -ma. Okay, and again, that's very much like what we've learned with the um, inseparable prepositions. Now, again, you can have a form... You have a word like Lila, uh, the accent being here. On the first syllable, with that vav, with the original patak, it's in the open pretonic position. You can have a long kametz. 
And again, that follows the rules beautifully. That's what we like. Uh, that's what we want. But also a vocal schwa, uh, unfortunately, is also possible. And again, um, it was so regular for the, for the conjunctive vob to have the vocal schwa that even where it doesn't belong, sometimes it goes there. But again, we have to live with it. What can we do? And then when we go to those two words, uh, Elohim, we put the vav on. We've got to have the corresponding short for Elohim. Then this quiesces. And when that quiesces, we've got to compensate the form. And so you get the sere again, Velohim. And then for the other word, uh, for the tetragrammaton, again, we really work off this form. Adonai, like this. And so we put the vav on. It's the corresponding short. And that's what they put on for the tetragrammaton, like this. And so there is going to be the answer for that. Now, all that was very similar to what we have with inseparable prepositions. But now comes the differences. And that is the sixth position. So, if we have a word... that begins with a vocal schwa. Now the key though is it cannot be a yod, but it's a word that has a simple vocal schwa, not a guttural with a composite, and not a yod with a vocal schwa. It's got to be a regular letter without a yod, without uh, the gutturals, all that stuff. Now, when we put the um, conjunctive vav on, this time we're going to point it as a shuriken. When we do that, obviously we've got to get rid of the dagish, lene and the dalad there. And so with a regular vocal schwa, we go with shurik. Okay, so remember that. Next, we want to talk about letters that are, we would call lapials, letters that are pronounced with the lips. And in Hebrew, that's the bait, that's the mem, and that's the pe. And uh, to remember these letters, we'll put some vowels to them and call them bumaf. And we'll make this a final form. Bumaf letters. And by that, what we're talking about is the bait, the mem, and the pe. These letters are pronounced with the lips. The bait, the mem, and the pe. Pronounced with the lips. When you have a word that begins with a bumaf letter, like the word like bane, which means between or something. Well, let's make it sun, though. That might be better. And now we're going to put the conjunctive vav on. Again, there's a dagesh lene in there. With a bumaf letter also, you want a shurik, and when you do that, you've got to get rid of a dagesh lene if there's one there. And so you say, ooh, vain. And so, uh, again, with a, a word that begins with a bait, a mem, or a pe, or a word that begins with a simple vocal schwa, not a yodo, you get the shurik, and so you have to watch for that. If you look at section four, I give you a review of the inseparable preposition of the conjunctive vav. Also, if you look after the ninth chapter, you'll see another review. But now it's time for you to do uh, exercise eight.